Amen. Amen. Okay, this morning, this morning I want to preach on a topic I titled The End of Wickedness of the Wicked. The End of the Wickedness of the Wicked. The End of Wickedness, sorry, of the Wicked. The End of Wickedness of the Wicked. Touch your neighbor. Say neighbor. Tonight shall come the end of wickedness of the wicked. In my father's house, in my mother's house, in my family, in my business area, in my street. Do you know that as you are here praying, there are people somewhere doing incantation? Are you equally aware that as you are here praying, there are people somewhere having a meeting to make sure that your family do not progress? Are you aware there are people somewhere now strategizing how to spoil your name? Are you aware there is somebody who is not comfortable because you can feed three square meals in a day? Are you aware that there is somebody who is not comfortable because you got married before her? And it's what you can conceive. Are you equally aware that people who will not want to see you rejoice even one day? I hear. I hear. And I hear the voice of the Lord said to me now that after tonight, that the wickedness of the wicked in your household shall come to an end. I didn't hear you. I said the wickedness of the wicked in your household shall come to an end. Let me hear your amen as somebody who believes what I'm saying here. Mm. You are the king of heaven on the earth. Even on the earth. You are the king above principalities and powers. Can be all see you. Can be all see you. Take me to Psalm 140, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 140, verse 1 to 3. Before you really take me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, for you to understand why you're here. For you to fight your enemy, that scripture gave us one line of scripture. And what does it say? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. And it says what? Pray without season. Pray without what? God is aware that there are temptations and errors and altars and wickedness everywhere. Then he made it so clear to you for you to survive it now on earth that you should pray without season. There was a video I watched today, yesterday. And I was so touched. I think in the next nine vigil, we are going to try to see if I can get that video. If I get it, we are going to play it in the church. We are going to do it like a normal chroma. There's a way we normally do it when we are running interdenominational. And it will be very big in this altar. You watch it. If you watch that video and see the tribulation that is now and the ones to come, then you will understand that here is not safe. That earth is not conducive for us to live. That we need to prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Take me to Psalm 40, 140, sorry. Verse 1 to 3. Psalm 140 from verse 1 to 3. Yes, sir. Deliver me, O Lord. Now, David prayed his prayer and he said, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. From the what? Evil man. I didn't hear you. From what? Evil man. Uh -huh. Evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. He said, Preserve me from those that shall cause my problems. Which imagine mischief in their hearts. Which imagine what? Mischief. These are people that will sit one place 
and they will begin to think how they can bring you down by all means. Continually, and they gather together for war. Continually, they will gather to make sure you remain useless. And I have discovered that some people that don't start are people, one, who you refuse to share things with. Two, who you might be planted to give things they demand from you. Three, people who think you are eight with them and you're doing better. Four, those who think that somebody from your family cannot arise again. Now when they wake up, they will want to make sure that devil and evil prevails over you. Can I say something to you? Every planner, every evil planner over your destiny by the covenant of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary and from this covenant altar is hereby nullified and scattered. Amen. I didn't hear you. It's hereby nullified and scattered. Amen. Let your amen be louder. Let me confirm, confirm what you're saying. Say amen. Amen. Now, this tells you that there are devils here. There are evil everywhere. There are men that have sworn that they cannot see you succeed. Whenever you are being promoted in one way or the other, they will rise against you in one way or the other. No wonder the Bible made it so clear and it says, Surely, they will do what? But if the gathering is not of the law, they will what? Now, let me tell you the one that is the worst. The worst one is this one that when the devil wants to walk, he walks with somebody very close to you. Maybe your wife, your husband, your brother, your sister, in the church, your choir, your anything, somebody very close to you. You know, at that time, anybody that hears it believes the person because they believe the person is close to you and knows you. And those are the most dangerous ones that you don't pray for Satan to use. But we have noticed at this age that they are the ones now Satan are using. They are the ones now Satan. I remember a prophecy I gave one time some years ago. I was prophesying to a lady at the, at the midst of the prophecy. Her mother appeared before me. And when I saw what was going on in the realm, I said, I said to her, Madam, I don't want to give you this kind of prophecy, but what I'm seeing, I just stopped. She was just shouting, Daddy, prophesy. I said, No, what I want to say, you won't even believe me. I said, What I'm seeing in the spirit, it seems like what is causing your problem came from your mother. And she said to me, I don't know if some of you remember that testimony. It has been long. I said to me, um, <laughs> Daddy, I don't know how that could be possible. I said, the problem is your mother. Your problem is your mother. But I don't like giving such a message. I said, but I don't know what I would do. That What I would do is that may God vindicate me in this prophecy. But if you want me to pray this prayer, that in Hebrew language, there's what we call prayer, ifenza. Just spread it, and scatter them everywhere. Anybody where you touch, make it take. Make I do that kind of prayer. She said, yes. I said, whosoever that is behind your problem. She said, amen. We continue vigil. After two weeks, Wahala started. The mother became sick in the east. They called her. She came to counseling. I was doing counseling then, either Monday or Tuesday. She came and said, Daddy, my mother is very sick. And she's demanding for everybody to come. I said, okay, go. She traveled. When she got home, the mother demanded for all the children. And started to confess how she ate to winch. And how she has been the problem why all the daughters are having issue in marriage. That she cannot have peace if she doesn't talk. After the confession, the mother died. The day she came back, she started narrating the story for me. And I said, you see, I mean, don't kill your mama. 
Don't kill your mama. He said, he said, that even till now, as I'm looking at you, I'm still doubting that confession. He said, ah. Now, sometimes it could not, it might be that the mother was not, maybe, uh, how do I explain this? Maybe the mother was not this wicked. You know, there's some people that eat winch by mistake and by maybe want. You know, those that studied economics, want. You know, they, they are want. Yes. A lot of people, in fact, it's because of want that makes people commit so many atrocities, uh, atrocities uh, uh, sins. And when such calamities are being committed, when such problems come upon you, may your want never cause you a mistake that you cannot resolve again. Say better amen, church. Say better amen, church. Say better amen, church. Now, look at the story we read in the, um, during the Bible reading. In Daniel chapter 6. When you look at the history and what transpired in Daniel chapter 6, it will come so clear to you that there are enemies of progress everywhere. Enemies of what? Enemies of progress. I will say. Because of the excellent spirit is found in Daniel. Daniel was among the first president, among the three presidents that was chosen. He was the first president among the three presidents that was chosen. And the princes and all that. When King Darius chose him and chose other people, all the people in that group became envy of Daniel. When you understand the mystery of all these things, they have no other option to wake up and to plan against him to make sure he doesn't prosper, he doesn't succeed. There are people because of the little shop you have, they are not comfortable, they want to make sure you go down by all means. There are people because you just bought a car, one, one. They want to make sure that nothing good comes out of Zion. But let me shame the devil this morning. Any planner of your life, God will put them to shame one after the other. I didn't hear you. Every planner evil of your life, God will shame them this morning. When you understand the history of what I put to Daniel, now hear me. When the wicked ones became so angry about Daniel, what they did was to plot what they can tell the king so that the king can concord to it and put Daniel in the trouble. Do you know that there are people that can advise people? I don't know how to say it. This man can come and advise this woman to make sure they can get to me. Hello? Now, when this one is receiving the advice, she will not know that the reason why they are giving that advice is for them to get to me. That was actually what happened to Daniel. Do you know that when they went to advise King Darius, they were advising him so that such law will exist within the 30 days. Nobody will bow to God or pray to God and all that. The reason is that they said, there is one thing we know Daniel will not agree to do. So for that purpose, it's better we go to the king. Let's advise the king. When the king says it as a law, Daniel will fail. So but when they were going to the king to advise, King saw it as a good advice and obey without knowing that there is a target somewhere. Anytime the enemy will target you, God will disgrace them one after the other. I said, God will disgrace them one after the other. In the name of Jesus. After they did all the whole thing, King Darius accepted. Pass a law and order. A law that can never be reversible. 30 days, nobody should pray, nobody should do this, nobody should do that. And at the end of the day, Daniel said, nah, I will pray, I will pray. I will pray, stop on, stop on Daniel. He said, I will pray. I will pray. Anything where they want to do, they do. He took his room and started praying. They saw him and went and reported to King Darius. 
And if you read that scripture very well, you will understand that when they went to King Darius to report that Daniel has disobeyed the law, they equally reminded him, remember that that law cannot be. <laughs> because they know that King Darius likes Daniel, so he can somehow say, okay, can we? They first of all, as they were telling him that he has disobeyed, they now equally tell him, say, please oh, remember that you cannot reverse that law. But there is something in that scripture that touches me. Even when they brought Daniel and said, okay, the law says if you disobey you, we'll throw you into the lion's den. When they throw him into the lion's den, the king became restless. The king could no longer sleep. Abu says, the king was on fast. Kai, let me prophesy. When somebody has done anything to stop your helper to locate you, Kai, that helper will not just come. He will now come with another helper. You know when it is that somebody is about to shut your door, he now opens a different new door. Plus the one he wanted to shut one open by himself. Hear me. When they caused the whole thing as a drama, it came to pass. The enemy succeeded. Is that correct? Now, when they threw Daniel into the lion's den, they closed it. That was the king went to the house, became restless, was no longer sleeping. He was just drying, drawing. I beg, may this day, may this night pass, may day come. And the Bible said when he woke up, he went back to that place. He didn't say, Daniel, are you alive? There was suspicion that the God of Daniel might not fail somehow. He now said to him, Daniel, as your God, save you. So that means at that time the king was actually suspected. He be like saying, "They are God. He is God. No, the fair. He can never fail. He can never fail. Jesus Christ, you can never fail. You can never fail. My action, God, you can never fail." You, you can, can never, never fail. fail. Jehovah Nisi. You, you can, can never, never fail. fail. You, you can, can never, never fail. fail. And when King Daniel shot at Daniel as a God saved you, Daniel responded to him. He said, Oh King, my God has saved me. For the Lord I serve shut all the mouth of the lions. And I can tell you confidently, convincingly, and comfortably that I, Daniel, is still alive. With no hurt, with no harm. For the lions which I was sent to destroy me became my friend and my brother. And King Daniel stood up by force. I said, oh yeah, yeah, I put nothing. We are going to go bring him up, bring him, bring him. They brought Daniel out. The joy about the whole thing was that when he came out, something happened to those enemies. Did anything happen to them? Huh? What happened to them? Huh? They became breakfast to not only them, them and their what? Anybody will want to destroy you. As in one backfire. No be only them. Them and their family. You do not understand the scripture. When Daniel came out. All of them. Including. Their family. Amen. And there is another thing that touches my heart. And the king established now. That the God of Daniel. Shall now be the God. Everybody. From generation to generation. That all of us will do what we shall. 
Because of your testimony, your enemy will serve your God. Amen. You didn't hear me. I said, because of your testimony, your enemy will serve your God. Amen. You didn't hear me. I said, because of your miracle, every enemy that have risen against you for years we serve the God you serve. Amen. If your amen is convincingly, that miracle belongs to you. Amen. I say 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 that miracle belongs to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Who believe that tonight the Lord is about to fight your battle? Is that the night? That the enemy always saw what? The evil sea. When men slept, the enemy came and saw the wicked sea. A seed of barrenness. A seed of failure. A seed of premature death. A seed of delayed disappointment. A seed that has caused you not to see the light of the day. But I want to announce to somebody today that my God will deliver you, not just you, including you and your generation. You see all those enemies who are sworn that it shall not be well with you. Tonight, we are going to go into war. I don't know how many people that is ready to go with me to the battleground. Tonight we are going to go into the battleground. And the Lord will do what no man can do. This night we are going to travel to villages. Be ready to get connected with me. We are going to travel to different states. Going to travel to different local governments. We're going to travel to different villages. We are going there to speak a word tonight that whatever that is holding you will leave you by fire by force. Let me tell you, the year is running fast on end. Before you know it, 2019 is over. When you enter 2020, they ask you to pray. You keep praying, God, this year, I want to buy a car. That prayer, you prayed it in 2019. 2018, not the same prayer. 2017, not the same prayer. We did 2020, not the same prayer. There is an error. There is an error somewhere. <laughs> there is an error somewhere. Tonight, we are about to settle whatsoever the enemy has kept somewhere while your prayer is not answered. I don't know if you believe me. And I pray for you, the Lord will deliver us all.